In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, non-Mendelian genetics. And basically what that means is that is the idea that um, not everything matches the nice, neat, dominant, recessive um, kind of framework that Mendel laid out. And there are some ways that, that can be kind of changed. And so one of those is called linked genes. A linked gene is when these are uh, genes that are typically inherited together. They are less likely to be separated through crossing over. It is probably because they are located on the same chromosome, and that's why they're called linked genes. This has something to do with map distance. So you can see here, I'll talk about map distance in a second. G and A are linked because they're on the same chromosome. But on this picture here, this G and A are a lot less linked than this GNA because the chance of there being a crossing over event between this GNA is a lot greater than between this GNA. And that's that idea of map distance. So this is basically showing you that there is a 9% chance of crossing over happening between these two genes and 11% chance of happening between these two genes. And so the idea is that you can use these percents as just a simple uh, number when you're adding and you're trying to figure out general percentages. So you could say, well, what's the chance that B and VG are going to cross over? Well, that's going to be approximately 20%. And so these map units and percentages have to do with one another. They're very closely tied together. Um, there's a there's a different way of thinking about this too. So here's another picture. So this um, what is this centimorgans? Don't even know what that is. Thirteen point two centimorgans. It basically represents that there's a thirteen point two percent chance that there's going to be crossing over between A and B. But B and C are a lot closer together, right? And so you'd expect for there to be a less chance for there to be crossing over here than there would be for anywhere inside here. And so that it makes sense that there's a less chance to hit here than there is in this larger area here. But what's the chance between A and C? Well, it's a greater chance than either one of those two together. And this, this is showing you that it's not necessarily those two added together because due to double crossovers, for our purposes, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, that simple addition will give you a general idea. And the kinds of questions that you're going to see on this will be just a general kind of um, understanding of, you know, the question might be, which one is more likely to cross over? Obviously, it'll be a lot more wordy than that. But you're going to look and see B and C are a lot closer together. Therefore, they're a lot less likely to cross over between B and C than there is between A and B or a and C. And so when we're talking about map distance, that's what we're talking about. The The big idea here is that when Mendel did all of his crosses, he could come out with some really simple ratios, right? If you cross a heterozygous, uh, just a monohybrid cross, a heterozygous individual with a heterozygous individual, there's a 25% chance that those that, that recessive trait is going to be inherited by the offspring right? Um, and so what a linked gene would do is it would skew those percentages because uh, when Mendel did all of his crosses, none of the, the, all of the traits that he studied just happened to be unlinked. And so what, um, what we saw as we began to study more and more is that sometimes genes are linked and it throws off those assumed percentages. Another thing that can throw this off are something called sex link traits. And a sex link trait is a trait that is linked to the sex chromosomes. For humans, these are the X and Y chromosome. The Y chromosome determines maleness. And so the presence of it causes that individual to become male. And the absence of it causes that individual to remain female. And so an uh, individual with an XX genotype is female, an XY genotype is male. The X chromosome is necessary for life. The Y chromosome obviously is not because not about half the people in the world don't have the Y chromosome. Well, there are some 
traits that are linked to this X chromosome. And so notice with females, so this is a trait called hemophilia. Um, if you have hemophilia, your blood doesn't clot correctly and you're known as a, in the old days, it was called a bleeder. This is, um, this is actually a family tree of the old European royalty line. Um, and this shows how hemophilia found its way into this royal line. And a lot of the male would-be heirs ended up dying of hemophilia. Because, well, why is it that males get it more frequently? Well, notice females have two genes, right? So if they have just one dominant, they even a, even someone who has the recessive allele can have a dominant and they'll just be heterozygous. They can carry that allele, which is not good. Uh, like Victoria here carried the allele. And so when she had Leopold, Leopold was hemophiliac. Um, and then they, they continued to pass to other individuals, all right? And so Leopold had a daughter that was a carrier also who had a son who had hemophilia. So you get the idea. Um, a male only needs one little H because that Y doesn't carry the gene on it. And so there's only one opportunity for the male to be quote unquote normal and have that dominant allele. And so males don't have a homozygous or heterozygous because they only have one allele of that gene. And so males are much more likely to have a sex linked recessive trait than they are, than females are. Colorblindness is another example of this. One in 25 males are colorblind. One in 250 males are, or 250 females are colorblind. And so it has to do with this uh, frequency the, the frequency of females being a lot less for sex link traits. You can see this in a pedigree here. So this is a female that has it. You would expect that if a female has a sex link recessive trait, all of her sons are going to have it, right? Because where does the son get the X chromosome from? Not from dad. Dad gives away the Y chromosome to the sons. And so that's why you see all these males that have it. And if as long as dad doesn't have it, then the daughters will be normal, but they could be carriers, right? Because, well, there will be carriers because mom is giving them one of those carrier X's and you see it come back out here. And in this case, all the children are going to have whatever that particular trait is. And so uh, another example that doesn't necessarily fit Mendel's lines is something called multiple genes. You could see this as multiple alleles um, or polygenic traits. All of those things will be in play here couple of things of uh, hair color is an example of this and basically where you have multiple alleles that code for this and those alleles add up to have an additive effect of the to the phenotype here's an example of skin color there's three genes in this particular example i think there's more than three genes that code for skin color i think it's like 21 or something like that but in this case this individual has all recessive so they have very light skin one dominant a little darker, two dominants a little darker. You get the idea. All dominants the the darkest skin, and so there's variation. There's a wide variation. So imagine if there were twenty of these genes, you would have a wide variation there of that. And so these multiple genes have an additive kind of effect. And the last thing is called multi. It's called non nuclear inheritance. Non nuclear because it's not coded for in the nucleus, but there is DNA in other parts of your body. Remember the mitochondria has DNA. Well, all mitochondria are inherited from your mother because the sperm cells do not donate mitochondria when, during fertilization. Only the egg cell has that. The mother, of course, is the maker of the egg cell, has those mitochondria. And so, whereas nuclear DNA is inherited from all ancestors, mitochondrial DNA and any other non-nuclear DNA is inherited from the um, a single lineage, in this case, the female lineage uh, with plants, something like chloroplast would be the same sort of idea. Uh, the, the chloroplast would be inherited by the female or whatever the egg producing uh, sex is for that particular organism.